This video is for adjusting the oil discharge pressure that would come out of a steam gem generator Webster pump. Um, it's quite simply, we have an inlet suction line that goes through a filtration system. There is a vacuum gauge to measure the resistance from the oil tank. It goes into the inlet side of the pump on the back side. We have our main discharge line, which is located right here. And then we have our bypass line right here, which would go to a return loop back to the tank. Um, there is a needle valve located on the bypass section with a solenoid interposing in front of it. The main basis of this idea is that on startup, when the pilot has lit and confirmed flame, these two solenoids and the bypass will energize for low fire. Um, there's some instances where there will be two output lines with a third solenoid located right here in this free space. Um, and you would see a secondary line with two blue hoses similar to these going to the front of the unit. Now this system, as I show here, only has one discharge line. So it's coming into my blue hose on the front section, going through one single pass to three discharge outlet hoses. And then this would connect into our oil gun, which would have three tips on the back side. Quite simply, the two shorter links are your low fire needle uh, or, um, nozzles. And the longer length is the high fire nozzle. The um, high fire is always larger in size. It could be threes on the lows and it could be a six on the high. It could be three and a half. It could be a five. No matter what, your lows are always lower in orifice size than your high. Um, like I mentioned, there is sometimes two configurations where there would be a secondary section with the third solenoid in this area, which would have the secondary hose. You would see the primary connect out into this line. It would have two branch offs to feed your two outputs for low fire. That secondary hose would come out onto a sec uh, second line out front and it would have a single branch off connecting to your high fire. Um, and what essentially that would do is you would have two pressure outputs and segregating one nozzle so it's only activated on high fire. This was common in a lot of the older systems, but on the new systems, we just utilize all three for low and high, just with different pressures. Um, now, going to back to this bypass solenoid here, what happens is there's a needle valve for adjustment. So as the pump is running, it will be discharging with this fully closed and the bypass open at a maximum output pump pressure. It could be from 160 pounds all the way up to 250 pounds on a range. We will tell you what is the maximum pump discharge pressure and this can be adjusted by undoing the screw on the side of the pump here. We'll take this out quickly. Inside you'll actually locate a set screw, it's 1 8 uh, Allen key. You just insert this inside and you can adjust the pump by um, undoing it to uh, decrease the flow or increasing the spring tension to uh, increase your pressure output. Um, so for instance, you may be desiring a 160 but it's doing 200 on your gauge. What you would have to do is of course unscrew it by turning it counterclockwise and that will make sure that it will decrease the overall pump discharge pressure. Now, if we've told you that you require a 160 output on high fire and say a 110 on low fire, quite simply what you'd be doing while doing low fire is adjusting this once your maximum pump pressure has been determined. Um, you would quite simply start up low fire with this opened up, say half a turn, measure what your discharge pressure is now with the bypass now ventilating part of the flow and then adjust it to the fine tune what we have specified, say 110. Um, opening this up will make the pr uh, pump discharge pressure drop, closing it off will increase it. Um, it correlates quite simply with that. Once it's done, you would use the set screw to set it so that it's fixed in position. And then you can confirm it on the front end 
at the nozzle discharge as well. Um, you will see that uh, it should be matching quite closely within five pounds and you can fine tune it with your airflow volume. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. One more note, I wanted to mention that I was saying the nozzles. These are the nozzle tips. They come in all sorts of different sizes. Um, this one specifically is written on the side here. It should be right there, a 6.5 PLP. It's very important that you get a PLP style. That's the spray pattern. So basically a hollow core um, with a, a semicircle of um, majority spray and then a very outer ring spray where it would be just misting. Um, and quite simply, insert. You just finger tight it as far as you can down. It should almost see itself. There may be a small gap. So it's almost like a finger width. And then all I would do is uh, take a wrench and quarter turn it one uh, portion tighter so that it doesn't move out of the, the end of the gun. Um, typically, on the inside of the chamber, there is an insertion point to this. Your nipples should be inserted uh, within flush to the inner cap or half an inch past so that if they ever do have residual drip, it will drip onto the hot refractory brick rather than the cold shell of the chamber. Um, if there's any other questions or concerns, then you can call us anytime at our contact information listed in the channel.